stoppers are annoying. They'll drive you crazy. If they don't open enough or they don't close enough, then they're really not doing much of anything but getting in the way. Um, getting them cleared to get uh, hair or debris out of them to free up a clog is, is an aspect we'll talk about here in a second. But I also want to show you how to adjust it so it opens enough and closes enough. Now on the underside, you're going to find this small metal band that by compressing the other ends of it, the open ends of it, you can slide it right off like that. Now up underneath here is a lock nut that I will show you right now. But when it's loose, it controls the depth of the rod. So basically what you're trying to do when you reach underneath there to get the motion you need to get it either to the stopper closing tighter or opening wider is you're going to move that stopper rod in and then retighten that nut up. You won't have to slide it off the back of the actual control rod for the stopper. You'll just be loosening this, shifting that rod to get the stopper to do what you need it to do, and then retightening it up. I'm a big fan of just doing it by hand. Sometimes it's not quite enough and you'll need to put a pair of pliers on it or something. Um, but that helps you get it adjusted. Now, when it's set back in place, I usually move the stopper control rod all the way down which puts the stopper all the way up. Drop that rod in. Now with the rod all the way down against the faucet and with the control rod all the way down so that the stopper's all the way in the up position, I can pick the appropriate hole I want and then use the metal band to install it. You're gonna put one hole of the band on first, like so. And then you're going to slide the hole of the primary rod on there and then the back hole of the metal band like so. You don't need to slide it any further up than you need to to get it to lock in place. Then reach up, tighten the nut, and then test it. You're good to go. Now, the second half of this to remove the stopper, all you're going to do is turn this nut to loosen it and be prepared for the possibility of a little water or debris coming out there. Once that's off, you can pull that rod straight out enough to loosen the stopper in the sink. Now, that rod engages the stopper. Let me see if I can make this clear like this. So when you're ready to put it back in, you'll need to put the stopper in and kind of hold it so it's not quite all the way down. Insert the rod and keep moving it around until you've got it all the way through the stopper. You'll know because moving the rod will obviously move the stopper. With the stopper out, you can get hair or debris off of the stopper or out of that top part of the sink where it or that top part of the drain where it gets caught in the stopper control rod. Now with this tightened, not crazy tight, but just tight, because the tighter you get it, the di more difficult it is to operate the stopper. Once you've got that back in position and the stopper seems to be operating properly, turn on the faucet, get a lot of water running, make sure you don't have any leaks here, and test the operation of the stopper. Make sure it'll fill up like you need, and then drain properly when it's open. And that's all it takes not only to clear a, draw, a clog from your stopper, but to get it adjusted properly.